So, before we start, can you just give us a little background on yourself, previous roles, and how you came to find yourself at PGS? Yeah, sure. So basically, I'm in IT for 10 years already. I earlier worked for Nokia, for HP, basically different big brands for like high-profile telecom projects. And uh, lately, like a half a year ago, I met a colleague named Lukasz. He's working in PGS as uh, like a CTO role. And uh, I thought that this is a person that I would like to learn from, so I switched up the companies, basically. Okay, nice. So you're from a strong IT background, but at what point did you know that you wanted to pursue a career in AI? Uh, it was around six years ago when we started building SON. This is called Self-Organizing Networks. This is a part of uh, like a telecommunication uh, network management where you have uh, automation that controls the antennas and everything. And uh, this is the first project that was related to AI that I uh, started working closely. And it was uh, in a time where the libraries and tools were not that mature. So uh, it was like a pretty nice thing that we could build all of this from scratch. Uh, currently now it's getting better and better, so with the current tooling, a uh, lot of the stuff that we did was looks really poor and like <laughs> not that great anymore, but yeah, it was nice to be like the pioneer in the field. Yeah, sure. So uh, do you believe that your IT background combined with your UX experience prior to this has given you a greater understanding of the customer experience? Yes, and I think that it's uh, really important because in the areas like uh, production optimization, which I was talking on the presentation today, uh, it's really important to not to forget about the human aspect. So even on the automated production lines, we are building things called augmented operator that you get a mobile app where uh, in the where there are the devices which you cannot control remotely. The operator gets an info, okay, now just t turn the temperature one degree up and the operator can do it. So you can still even control old machinery which is not uh, connected in any way. Okay. So what does a typical week look like for you as the chief data scientist at Yeah, so PGS? I split my time at work between research and working on the customer projects. So it's like 60 to 40. So 60% of my time I spent working on the projects. Uh, together with my teammates, we have uh, 20 people as a, like, uh, data scientists in PGS. And we are, of course, uh, getting a lot of help from the rest of the company, like developers, testers, DevOps people, so depending on the project. And yeah, working with customer is a big part of portion of my time, but I put at least 40% on research, on like writing books, papers, and uh, trying to stay ahead, basically. Sure. So your talk today focused on AI aiding digital transformation um, with mesh twin learning. Can you give us a brief explanation of mesh twin learning and also touch on some of the key takeaways that your talk would have given the viewers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. This is uh, the MTL is a concept that we extracted from our work for German manufacturers. So we are optimizing production processes, and we combined basically the technologies like cloud, machine learning, and IoT mm. into one thing with uh, Taguchi micro optimization methods. So you may imagine that you have a set of many factories, and if you want to optimize your production process for a certain criteria like uh, energy efficiency, you want to reduce the energy footprint. So you can try to test out different hypotheses by doing micro changes. So in the factory one, you change some parameter like temperature in the steel baking furnace by plus one degree. So steel bakes in 1500 degrees, so plus one or minus one will not influence the final project to, to destroy it or make it bad. However, you can start observing the trend if it's uh, helping to reach your optimization goal, like faster production or something like that. And by doing this across many factories, you can change and tweak the process by up and down small changes. And you can see which change is affecting the process mostly in the way that you want to, and then propagate it across all the factories. So you can quickly, by this kind of iteration, optimize your experiment running through the experiment graph to really the solution that you want. Yeah, OK. So. In terms of PGS developing customer solutions, they've been doing this for 15 years now. Mm -hmm. In this time, AI and data science have obviously come a long way, but are there some challenges that you're still facing in your work day to day? Yes, so the biggest challenge is of course short, shortage of talent. So we are constantly looking for people like everybody else is, so there is a, like a small and finite pool of data scientists. So uh, yeah, we basically start getting a problem that you get more projects than you can handle. So yeah, the people think is the biggest issue that we have currently. Okay, so can you give us a greater insight into some of the work that you've completed on behalf of your customers? Is there a common theme between these pieces of work? 
Yeah, so there are several common themes, but it's not like that we focus on one thing. PGS is a company that exists for 15 years already, and it was founded as a software house. So mm, it was building many different custom software solutions from the cloud area on AWS, Azure, <coughs> and so on. And data science is a new addition. So uh, we created this department when I joined the company and we are starting to grow it up. So there is no like a single thing that we specialize in. It's like a software uh, solution company. And since we have 700 people, we may imagine we have a lot of projects. It's like 80 something projects per year. And they are from different domains, from uh, travel, from finances, from manufacturing and so on. Sure. So what does 2020 hold for you? What are you looking forward to working on this year? Well, definitely quantum computing. It's something that everyone is waiting for uh, the, for the time when it's really publicly available from cloud providers and you can really run your workloads. This would be very interesting to see how it could influence the speed of learning. OK. And where can we keep up with your work? Yeah, you can keep up with my work on the company blog or LinkedIn and also on my profiles in social media. So we are welcome to see there and also the research papers that we do, we um, publish in the like academia and also on Medium. Okay, perfect. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers.